Welcome to the I Create Daily Podcast. I'm Leora Alderson. And I'm Devani Alderson. We're your co-hosts on this journey of creativity and productivity. I Create Daily is for artists in every genre of creating, from musicians to writers, crafters to inventors, bloggers to entrepreneurs. I Create Daily is a movement for creators serious about your art. If you're into creating anything, this podcast is definitely for you. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Hello and welcome to the I Create Daily podcast, a movement for creators serious about their work. I'm Leora. And I'm Devani. And today we're doing a coffee break session where Devani and I just have a conversation about things that are going on and that we're thinking about that we think and hope that you guys might also be interested in. So I guess I'll kick it off. Yeah. Today we're going to talk about honing in on goals, not creating goals. We have several coffee breaks we'll link to about how you create a goal in case you want to listen to those. But we're going to talk about how to hone a goal. We just launched a March writing challenge, a 30-day March writing challenge. And in going through the different people's goals, we noticed that there's two types of goals. There are obscure and really big audacious goals, which are amazing. And then there are clear, honed-in goals. And so we just wanted to clarify and help people distinguish how to create something that's a little bit more honed-in so that you can maximize the time, whether you're doing our 30-day writing challenge or anything else. You can prepare the time and time length it takes to accomplish something so that you can actually feel like you're making progress. And I think that's the biggest thing. When we set really big goals, We like to call them visions when it's really big and hard to kind of imagine it coming together. So an example of a really big goal could be something like next year we want to create a live event. I'm just throwing something out there. Well, that's a really big goal. We can't just go out and do that in a month or two. So a smaller, more honed in goal could be we're going to send out an offer to the type of people we think would be interested in a live event and we're going to gauge the interest and from there we're going to craft something and work towards what we would need to do for a live event if that makes sense and you can jump in I'm just setting the stage of what we're going to share about yeah so what we're working on with right now is we just start as of this recording it's March 1st 2019 and we just launched our first 30-day writing challenge for people who are interested in doing more with their writing whether it's publish their finish their book start a book um, uh, establish the habit of daily writing um, and any of that um, Mm -hmm. I should have used a writing goal. I don't know why my, my, I I guess I just wanted to also um, encompass so many different types of goals. Well, right. And so, but this is part of what got to put it on our mind and that is going through the goal. So to apply to join the writing challenge, people needed to enter their email and the goal that they wanted to accomplish. And it became clear that, and certainly this is, we've been through all of this and we still do it daily and that or regularly and often daily. And that is the concept of the more we, the more you can hone in on a specific, and most people are familiar with the concept of SMART goal, S M A R T, which stands for smart, measurable, achievable, realistic, um, and what's time it? bound. Time bound, yeah. So and so, you know, really, that's what this is. It's a thirty-day writing challenge. Yeah. Uh, in January, we had a thirty-day art challenge, yeah. and we will continue doing various of these throughout the year. Um, but to be specific, so for instance, some people will say that they would just want to write more. If you come into a challenge or any goal that you may have, just my goal is to write more, that's not specific enough to signal to yourself, to your conscious mind, your subconscious, um, how, how are you even going to know if you've achieved that? Right. You know, essentially, well, it's more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, if maybe before you wrote a paragraph or nothing and now you write a page, then that could be more, but then that could be your goal. Your goal could be to write at least a page a day, um, or to write at least for half an hour a day or mm-hmm. whatever for you, whatever the goal that's realistic. And it sets up an internal reward because if you say you're just going to write more then there's, there's nothing there to really measure and grasp onto. But like you were saying, if you say I'm going to write a page every day, then at the end of the day, you've written a page and you can feel good about that. And that creates its own like fuel for continuing essentially. And even if you don't hit the page mark, at least you have an aim and you can, instead of beat yourself up for it, you can say, okay, I didn't write a full page. I wrote more than a paragraph, which is what I was doing before, but I didn't write a full page. Tomorrow, 
I can write a page. And it, it just helps you reset and know where you're aiming. Right, exactly. And yeah, to have some sense of progress yeah. even, right? Um, so that's an example. Another example would be um, somebody uh, might want to write more poetry or they might want to publish a book or start a book. That's good. Um, but you also want to specify, like, I want to start a book titled mm -hmm. or for what genre or um, what, you know, how big of a book, is it a short story? Is it, you know, so to be a little more specific. And so here's the thing, the more specific we are in our visioning process and our goal setting process, then the more, the, the easier it is for our unconscious and subconscious minds to help us achieve those goals as well as for yeah. our conscious mind. It's like, you know, again, it's sort of like, so, so we live near Winston-Salem, uh, North Carolina. And if I said, I'm going to Winston-Salem, that doesn't, I can hop in my car and head there, but I won't get anywhere really. I might arrive yeah. in Winston-Salem, but there won't be much purpose to anything I do unless I know exactly where in Winston-Salem I'm going. You'll hit the welcome to Winston-Salem sign that's yeah. stop and turn right back. <laughs> right. You made right. it. Right. And, uh, and there are actually, as Dave Oni well knows, hard times. <laughs> That I've gotten in the car heading someplace. I actually knew where I was going, but not necessarily how to get there. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. And you know, but that's real too, right? Yeah. And our goals, there are goals like we might have a goal of writing a book or starting a book without any idea of exactly how we're going to get the book published when it's mm -hmm. time. Okay, so so that's real and that's who okay. was it that just said the other day about like a lot of people want to write a book, but they don't necessarily have like what well, oh man. Uh, carry on. You're I remembered some. I'll remember it. I'm sure. Okay. So, so don't worry too much about like the things you don't know. Focus on what it is you do. So if yeah. you know you want to write a book, then, then you can identify what kind of book. Is it fiction or nonfiction? Mm -hmm. If it's fiction, then what genre? Is it fantasy? Is it sci-fi? Is it romance, etc.? What is the genre? Um, approximately how many pages do you want it to be? And if you're not sure, if you may be just thinking, well, I just want to tell the story that's in my head, you know, that won't leave me alone. Uh, but still, you can start with an outline. Um, okay, so that story won't leave you alone. It has components. You know, we know that the, the best stories are like there's a there's an inciting incident. There's like mm -hmm. a, a, a starting bang. with a bang, the bang. and then yeah. there's you know like everything's good, and then there's rising to like peak crisis yeah. kind of thing, and all the, the different stages in between. And which then I'm there's books, I'm yeah. sure right now. No, but. and then there's books that start with um, everything is fine, and so you know going in everything's going to end up fine, and then it tells the story of how everything became fine. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, exactly. Like, yeah. I know the dystopic genre does that a lot. a lot. It's like you start with this narrative of like, we are now in peaceful times, but once upon a time, like yeah. 10 years ago, there was this apocalypse and you yeah. know, just uh, yeah. obviously I'm making there, all this up, but I'm and there sorry. are, well, and so, so there are the story, the story characteristics, like yeah. the story process that we're not versed on, obviously yeah. to elaborate here. I don't remember all the details of the things that I have learned. And I'm not a fiction writer, even though there are fiction writers in our family. And I feel and like it's group. rubbing off. Yeah. <laughs> there's three, there's one published fiction author in the family and there's two others that are aspiring and I feel like it's like rubbing <laughs> off. You have a fiction story inside. Oh of yeah. You. I, okay. We'll see. But at any rate, the part of the point is, so you can start your outline. So if you have scenes, if you have characters, then you start and begin the outline of those. So it yeah. may be that if you haven't started your book yet, that part of your writing is to um, just start writing. You can just start writing your scenes, whatever's yeah. like bursting to come out. But then as it begins to flow out, begin to identify, okay, so what is the nature of the story? What, you know, what kind of outlines and, and, and just kind of create a rough outline as you go when you can. And a goal around that might be, so you're just starting a book. So your goal is I want to write a book. That's a, that's great. It's probably going to take a year, maybe six months if you're really, really dedicated. So the goal the tangible, measurable goal yeah. might be, I'm going to complete my first draft by June, which means every week or every day I need to write X many words to fill X many chapters. And, and that can be a goal because you can measure that by day, by week and by month. And then you'll know, okay, my first draft is done. And that's its own achievement. Do you have a published book yet? No, but you can celebrate the fact that you got your first draft done. Right. And, and that it's just breaking down the process of making all these big ideals small and manageable. Big ideas. And, 
ideas. Yeah. That's what I meant. <laughs> I know that's what you meant. These big ideals. <laughs> but you know, we're so many people in the audience are writers and they're like, I know. <laughs> they're going to notice, you this know, when so we shameful. <laughs> well, and the so great thing about writing is that you can edit it before other people see it. And the <laughs> thing about talking out loud is that people people get to hear firsthand <laughs> the mistakes. <laughs> It's, That's anyway, right. I'm yeah. glad I'm not like a hyper perfectionist right. because that would be hard. Yeah. So, and you know, we will have, we'll be interviewing writers um, because some of the people want to know, like, how do people structure their stories? Yeah. How do they develop their characters and all that? And so that's not what this is about. So we don't yeah. want to like lead you astray and giving you some yeah. ideas. But the point is, and, and so the other thing, like we're trying to balance uh, two things, two different concepts. One is just create and just start creating. But the other is, yes, bring some consciousness to it mm -hmm. when you can. So we don't, you don't want the structuring and like, what am I going to do with this book? And how is it going to get published? You know, the technical side of it to, you know, and, and logistics to derail your creative flow. But at the same time, for your creative flow to become something when it grows up, then it needs to eventually have a form. And if you're listening to this and you're feeling a sense of, oh no, now I need to hone in my goal. Now I need to zone in on my goal. And so now I feel behind. Don't worry, just breathe, take a breath. And what you might do is while you're writing or in your next creative session, you might just let those questions marinate in your mind. You might just be like, where do I want this to go? Am I going in a direction? Am I writing things? Am I creating something that will eventually turn into something? Because the more you meditate on those ideas, because it doesn't always come instantly. We create goals and then sometimes an hour later, we're like, no, we need to revise this. You know, it, sometimes days later, mm -hmm. we need to revise it or weeks later. Like, so just meditate on those while you're creating. Mm -hmm. So then you have the creative flow. You're still building that momentum. And in the back, your mind is thinking about where is this going to go and how can I then create measurable goals around it. Yeah, a good analogy that came to mind as you were talking, Devani, is, uh, is parenting. And that is that, so you're a parent with a child and you have ideas of, uh, you know, like maybe ideas of where you would love to see the child's life go um, relative to being safe, being secure, having a good mm -hmm. job, what have you. Um, but of course, it's going to be, you know, what, how the child develops. So you're going to expose them to opportunities, to good schools, etc., so they can grow up to be all that they can be. And as they're growing, it's like what shows up early on may not be what manifests later, mm -hmm. um, but it is an unfolding process. And so, you know, it's kind of the same thing with putting our work out in the world is as it grows and matures, the opportunities will develop that help it go in different directions mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, so, you know, you might start out with, for instance, um, one genre or one thought about what your ideas are to become. But as you're in the journey mm -hmm. of, in this case, parenting your idea to life, um, bring raising it up and helping it grow up in the world, then be open to the changes as well. So it's, it's both. It's like short-sighted thinking and far-sighted mm -hmm. thinking or microcosmic and macrocosmic. Have the idea, just start flowing creativity, but, you know, kind of have your sense of, of the horizon as well kind of like again when we drive it's yeah. like you have a sense of where you're going and the distance and the road but you you've got the periphery you're aware as well and so in this case the periphery would be um you know your your sort of like your end goal i guess it's not that's not actually a good analogy it's mixing because you want to you want to your end goal should be the direction that you're going um but when it comes to creativity what you're focusing on in the moment is what you're creating mm -hmm. and you're peripherally aware of where you're going to end up with it and some people have, some people are naturally inclined to just be immediately uh clear on what they want like and then other people they need time to just um synthesize what they're doing and so you have to like take every take all advice you get with the grain of salt and realize you need to process it in a way that that you actually operate mm -hmm. but it also reminds me like we talk about peeling back the layers of an onion but then it also reminds me of a lotus flower mm -hmm. like if you look at the pod and a seed of a lotus flower it looks nothing like mm -hmm. an actual lotus flower mm -hmm. because in the process it's becoming the lotus mm -hmm. and so all of our ideas start out as seeds that look nothing like where it, like you can talk you That's can talk to idea. any writer or yeah. any author or anybody really and if you ask them what their project looked like when they had the idea versus when it 
went out into the world, it's two, it's almost two opposite different things. Yeah. And both are awesome, but you're working towards the vision. And so it just becomes more clear. It unfurls more as you do it. Yeah, no, that's a great point. So again, back to the like summary of the main thing. And I, you know, like I feel like this is for me anyway, a lot more rambling. Like my ideas weren't coming as clearly and crisply. You just articulated really well. I'm not like sitting here at this place before you start talking, thinking, should we just like scrap this one <laughs> and start recording all over? Because I'm not being very clear and I'm not sure that's going to be of service. But oh, it illustrates the point, right? right? Well, exactly. Well, no, exactly. That's just why I'm saying, okay, Okay, so so this will be okay. Hopefully somebody will, will get some value out of it, but you don't stop the process in this mm -hmm. case of creating. So yeah. create, even when it seems uh, muddled um, and not as clear and crisp as you would like it to be because it is in the journey that the way becomes more clear. Yes. Um, so I think we can else? just end on that. Okay, and thank you for joining us and let us know your thoughts and your experiences of setting goals, um, becoming more clear and the main thing I think above all else is to not obsess about having the perfect plan yes. or the perfect goal or the perfect phrase of our way of describing the goal, but continue working daily to create and refine, create and refine that vision. And that's how you will become more clear and move along more closely in the, toward your goals and toward achieving your goals. Yeah. So, I should have let it stop when we let it stop, but all it's okay. 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 Thank Bye, you. Bye guys. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us for the I Create Daily podcast. Please let us know what creatives you would like us to interview and what topics you would be interested in hearing more about. And if you enjoyed this show, please leave a review on iTunes. We value your feedback. We read all the reviews and it just helps us get the word out on the I Create Daily podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.